Hey pal, you want to learn how to make a Pokemon glitch video? Come join me and I'll show you what happens behind the curtain. <laughs> Come on, do I look like someone who's up to no good? That's fair enough. But you're still coming with me! Go! Monster Ball! Oh, did I catch your attention? Ha! I'd like to welcome you to my studio, which is also my bedroom, which is also my kitchen. Apartments here in Japan are just, they're, they're really small, okay? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Behind the Bugs, where I will be showing you exactly what goes into producing one of the Green Glitches episodes. Quick disclaimer here, I am not a professional editor. Uh, I have no experience editing videos, uh, aside from what I've actually done for my YouTube channel, which I started just about a year ago. I guess I used to make videos kind of for fun back in high school, back when I had, let's call it, big munchlax energy. I have this, like, 14 pound bag of rice. And when I say make videos, I mean like, Windows Movie Maker put clips in a certain order. <laughs> really light on the editing. If you are a professional editor, there might be many points in this video where you'll be thinking, what is this guy doing? And in that case, please go ahead and post in the comments uh, with your tips, because any advice that makes producing these videos easier, I'd welcome. I divide the videos I make for my channel into three categories, uh, based on how much effort it takes to make them. So there's the low effort videos, uh, like the garbage you're watching right now. Please set up a sub. Is the animation done? I I'm waiting for it. And when I say low effort, I don't mean that, you know, I don't, I don't care. It's just that producing these videos literally takes less effort, probably because there's no script or very little visual editing, if any. In those videos, I can usually make within one or two days. Then there's the medium effort videos. I'd include the glitch videos among those. And those are ones where I probably do have to write a script and go through a full uh, production cycle. Oh, that sounds fancy in order to get those videos finished. But in the end, they're not that long. They tend to be between 10 and 15 minutes. So I can always sort of see the light at the end of the rock tunnel. And I don't get too demotivated thinking about the mountain I have to climb to complete the video. Those usually take me about two weeks, I would say. And finally, there's the high effort videos. And these are ones that are both long and require tons of, you know, script writing, a gameplay footage recording, uh, voiceover, visual editing, you know, the whole shebang. And those take me, you know, several weeks to a month, which is why I've only done like one or two of those. With the prologue out of the way, let's go ahead and get into... Part 1. The Research. Every glitch video starts with a research phase. And according to, you know, one comment. A couple, you know, a handful. I right, both my hands. More hands than a Machamp has. Maybe I should do some more research to make sure that these glitches aren't also possible in the international releases of Pokemon Gen 1. <laughs> in my defense, okay, when I made Glitches Part 1, I had like 120 subscribers or so, and I just decided to search one day in YouTube, you know, Pokemon bugs in Japanese. Uh, I came across a channel by a creator named Ganahibi, and I thought, oh yeah, this looks like cool. Why don't... This looks like cool. <laughs> oh yeah, this looks cool. Why don't I try and adapt these videos for a Western audience? And I had no idea that the international versions of Pokemon were also like pretty broken. The particular series I'm adapting is called Green Bug Jikyo. So green means green, bug means bug. I swear Japanese is actually a different language and Jikyo is the Japanese equivalent of a let's play. So it's the green bug let's play. And the series is basically about going through the game while doing as many bugs as possible. And I want to be clear that I'm not like poaching these videos one-to-one. -one. Uh, the videos I produce are actually very different. They're much more of a sort of highlight style. I think my four parts are in total about 50 minutes long of content. 
Uh, and these have been adapted from about four to five hours of playthrough. So they're very, very different. But of course, if you can understand Japanese, I would recommend checking out the original videos and you can sort of see where I took like inspiration uh, from the original series. Based on that description, you might have surmised that I don't actually do any research like, on the internet at large uh, or on my own trying to discover new bugs. And that's because I, I, I don't have any experience with that. All of the explanations I give you are just translations of the explanations in the original Japanese with, you know, some added, uh, let's call it flair. Hopefully not team flair because that game was not good. I shouldn't have said that. There's going to be a lot of hate in the comments. The game was fine, okay? It's just... It's not my favorite, alright? I'd say that this research phase generally takes me... Eh, one to two hours per video that I make. It's not very much at all. Which means we can go ahead and move on to... Part 2. Gameplay Recording. I imagine this is the part that most of you are curious about. Uh, and I am going to put in time code, so you probably just skipped this and you didn't hear any of my earlier rambling. Uh, but are you ready for the big revelation? The actual gameplay recording is by far the easiest part of the entire process. You'd think that because I'm showing, you know, absolute insanity as like the code crumbles on screen, that recording it would also be a nightmare of just the game crashing over and over and over and over again. And to an extent, that's true, <laughs> but it's also not nearly as bad as it sounds. You should see some background footage uh, from my most recent recording uh, in the background. I've sped it up a bit so you can see a bit more as I'm talking. But when we're talking about executing these glitches, we're not talking about, you know, MLG speedrun stats where the speedrunner has to do like a triple handstand and hold their breath while doing 10 consecutive frame perfect inputs with both of their pinky fingers. It's literally like select B in a menu, and you're done. It is 100% about knowing how to execute the glitch, and the actual execution itself, like anybody could do it. Which is great, it makes these videos really accessible, because you could go out and do this on your own. If you wanted to, I don't know why you would. <laughs> That's not to say that I don't mess up and have to reset. I'd say most recording sessions, I end up resetting maybe like 15 to 20 times, which again, sounds like a lot, but when I say reset, I don't mean that I gotta like wait for the console to reboot and then I gotta go to the start menu and hit continue. I just use save state within the emulator. So it's literally, I press F1 on my keyboard and it jumps me right back to where I was before the game crashed. Uh, so each reset takes me like less than a second. <laughs> and there are glitches where the glitching is so severe <laughs> that I do have to restart the emulator that I use, but those are very rare. Those have only happened maybe three or four times over the course of all four episodes. I do all my recording on my computer using uh, programs that allow me to play the Pokemon game on my computer. I'm not gonna tell you what those programs are or how to get them uh, because, you know, they technically don't exist, right? I've never heard of such things. Oh. Nintendo approved. Um, please support Nintendo with your earnings. With the footage completed and saved to our computer, it's big brain time. Part 3, script writing. So now, I have to attempt to somehow turn the nonsense that happened on screen into some sort of narrative that maybe people will sit down and watch for about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a daunting task. Sometimes that involves arranging the order that things happen in, so the order that I record in is not always the order that I actually present the glitches to you in, because that doesn't quite line up with the story that I want to tell. Story, yeah. <laughs> Writing these scripts is always a balancing act, because I have to consider you know, I, I don't want to repeat the same words over and over because that gets, you know, kind of stale and boring. But if I use too many big fancy words, it sounds like I ate a thesaurus for breakfast and I mean, nobody wants to listen to that. I got to consider, you know, how many jokes do I want to make? Where do I put the jokes in? Because I still want to progress the narrative of the video. 
But I also need to make it exciting so that people don't just leave before the video is done. I also get kind of nervous because I never know how my jokes are going to be received or if they're going to land. So I am from the United States, woo! Uh, but my analytics tell me that more than half of you are not. So that means that we don't have the exact same cultural background, which means that some of the jokes that rely on American cultural knowledge will be lost. I still get comments on the very first video about this joke in particular. If you're a filthy, uncultured pilot swan who can only speak good ol' American, then I'm afraid you're stuck with me and my weeb tier translations. Sorry. And I thought it was clear based on my presentation that I was sort of mocking the idea <laughs> that Americans are arrogant and only ever speak one language, the supreme language, American, that all of the world must learn. Of course, there is no such language. It's called English. Um, but like, that, it, it sort of comes from the joke, like, what do you call somebody who only speaks one language? An American. Uh, and clearly, some people did not quite get that joke. And I'm not saying they're, you know, dum-dums. I'm saying that I maybe uh, had unfair expectations of everybody being able to grasp that joke, which might not have been set up correctly in the first place. I get sort of extra nervous about the scripts because... When it's posted for the world to see, that's the first time anybody sees these jokes. So I have, you know, IRL friends, plural, that are Pokemon fans. But when I say they're Pokemon fans, they're like, yeah, Pokemon's fun. Filthy casuals, okay? You think this is a game? It's not about fun, okay? It's about winning. It's about crushing the games into a fine pulp. It's about spending 30 minutes talking about three Pokemon in a game that is so easy <laughs> you can beat it by only mashing A. That's the caliber of devotion you need to make these videos, okay? So, Pokemon is fun doesn't cut it. I'm saying that nobody proofreads these scripts. <laughs> I'd show you some of the script writing process, but I mean, it's just me typing in a Word document. I don't know how that could possibly be engaging in the least. Uh, I can try this, you know, I'll add, you know, the sick beats and like screen shake effects. Absolutely riveting. Typically, I won't record the scripts on the same day that I write them. That's because I want to just give myself a bit of time to sort of passively parse through what I wrote. Uh, maybe rewrite some things to make them a little bit sharper. And then before I actually record, I'll sort of do this final check where I'll ask myself, is there anything that I wrote that somebody somewhere might potentially find offensive or hurtful? Soy boy alert! Soy boy alert! Soy boy alert! What is this? Pokemon Beta Blue? Man, I thought you were a gamer. Is this guy an ice type? What a snowflake! Don't call me an ice type. I'm, uh, I'm not exactly an edge lord. I wouldn't even say I'm I'm an edge noble. I'm kind of like I guess a, a dull peasant is where I am on the edginess scale. It, it's just how I talk, and it's sort of how it's always been. So, sorry if you're looking for true edge lord humor, you won't find it here. Uh, by the way, don't ever eat tofu without sauce. It's disgusting. I'm just doing it for a joke. Soy boy. According to my analytics, a lot of my viewers tend to skew younger, so I at least want to try uh, and minimize or, you know, eliminate these sort of cheap jokes that come at the expense of others. I think, you know, acceptance does extend to you know, what you do in your free time, like watching fun videos on YouTube. Welcome to my Pokemon YouTube channel, by the way. I am afraid that this channel is also part of the secret leftist, communist, atheist, Muslim cabal attempting to destroy your video game is by making everybody feel included. Sorry. But I will stomp your head in if you start a fight with me, you thug scum! Anyways, excuse me ladies and gentlemen. Part 4. Audio recording. We've got the script written, so now it's time to actually record the voiceover. Uh, there's a lot of artistry that goes into audio engineering, and I don't know any of it. <laughs> Basically, as long as you can hear me, and as long as I'm not hitting you with that boom burst, 
I'm probably okay with how the recording turns out. Um, you know, I don't really pay attention to bass and treble, compressor, distortion, fade out, graphic EQ, normalize, pulse thread. I'm just reading random effects from the program I used to record. Um, back when I first started this channel, I didn't actually have a mic. I, I just used my smartphone and I would record the entire narration in like two minute clips and then stitch them together and hope that it somehow became something like audible. It was awful. I eventually decided to invest in a like an okay USB microphone and that's what I use now. Usually these recording sessions will take me like two minutes per page written and the scripts come out to about four to five pages each so maybe 10 to 15 minutes to record the actual voiceover and then like one or two minutes where I make sure that it's actually like audible. I'm sure that the actual audio engineers out there are you know internally screaming or maybe externally screaming in beautifully mastered audio. Please tell me what I'm supposed to do, I'm so lost. <laughs> Part 5. Gathering Assets We're almost ready to begin editing proper. We just have to go around and gather or create all of the assets that we're eventually going to use to create our video. And for me, this is the most hated part of the process. Not because it's difficult, it's probably one of the easiest parts, it's just that it's so, like, mechanical and robotic. I'm basically going through a checklist that spans the entire internet, being like, okay, I think I'm gonna need to use these images, and if the image doesn't exist, I have to go ahead and hop into Photoshop and attempt to create it uh, with whatever, like, tricks I can maybe find in YouTube tutorials. <laughs> it is not a fun process, and it usually takes me, yeah, two or three-ish hours uh, for these glitch videos. Creating the text and the intro for each individual glitch doesn't take me that long, uh, but part of it is also done within Premiere itself, so I don't really consider it part of this process. Usually a day or two after I finish writing and recording the script, I'll eventually say, Alright, it's time to get to work, and then, you know, I'll throw on the sick beats, and I'll just spend, you know, two or three hours getting this part of the project done. Part 6, Editing. And finally, we are in Premiere Pro and ready to edit. And let me just start by saying, I hate this program so much. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, I, I am a millennial, so I'm not like a stranger to computers, but it always feels that, unlike with most computer programs where the program does what I want it to, with these freaking Adobe programs, you know, Photoshop and Premiere, it always feels like, I need to figure out what the program wants me to do. I don't like it, it's so unintuitive. Uh, but that also might just be because, you know, I suck at this, I don't really have any formal training or experience. I'm sure these are fine programs used by real professionals. I just don't like them. And they're also really expensive. So if you want to make these videos someday, probably look into other options. I hear DaVinci Resolve is really good. <laughs> and I'll probably end up switching to that one day. So unfortunately, uh, or I guess fortunately for this series, my entire interface is kind of bugging out here. <laughs> um, what you're seeing recorded is not what I'm actually seeing here, IRL. Uh, but my computer is an absolute potato. Uh, just opening Premiere Pro sort of pushes it to its limits, so having Premiere Pro and this recording also open, I'm asking a little bit too much. So I'll just take this time to at least show you a bit about what my interface looks like. Uh, so usually I have one audio track that's my pre-recorded narration, I have one audio track that is the music that's going under that, and then uh, a few tracks above that with like pictures of the actual video itself. I have all my assets pre-loaded into this area here. Uh, you can manipulate the effects here. Uh, and then usually you would see the actual video preview here, and for whatever reason you just see nonsense. Green Glitches Part 5 currently... <laughs> on screen. For whatever reason, my program, it's set to English. I initially thought I would try and do it in Japanese as like extra practice, uh, but just like given how unintuitive Adobe is, like, no, it's not gonna happen. But, for some mysterious reason, effect up here and preset are still in Japanese. I have no idea why. 
while we're here in Premiere Pro, I want to talk to you about two clips that I think you'll find interesting. Unfortunately, I can't quite show you the timeline for them because, you know, my computer is about to explode. Uh, but I can at least describe them and then probably put in the relevant background footage. So because the text of the games is in Japanese, and I assume most of you don't speak Japanese, I can kind of cheat a little bit with what I show you in a way that I wouldn't be able to do in an English video. Let me clarify with that. I'm not like outright lying to you guys, but here's one example. So in Green Glitches Part 3, there's this part here where I say that after activating the Curse of Mountain Moon, your Pokemon will transform into Clefairy and then evolve into Clefairy. That is true, but eagle-eyed Japanese speakers might notice that the screen I'm showing you actually says Clefairy stopped evolving. Why is that? It's because the first time I recorded all the footage for part 3, I messed up and I had a big ol' mouse cursor in the middle of the entire thing. <laughs> so I had to redo all the footage, and when I redid it, I decided to see, oh, what happens if I try to stop the evolution? Nothing happens. So I said to myself, okay, I'm just gonna use this, you know, wrong footage, where only eagle-eyed Japanese speakers will say, hey, you're lying to us, as opposed to the footage that's correct but has a big old mouse cursor where not even eagle-eyed, just eyed viewers will say why is there a mouse cursor on the screen? You also might notice that later on in the video I did use footage that had a mouse cursor on screen and I just put a disclaimer. Well, you got me there! <laughs> on average I'd say that each minute of final footage that you see takes me about 30 minutes to deal with here in Premiere. Of course, that varies greatly, so if I'm just talking over footage that's happening, that's obviously gonna be done in much less than 30 minutes. But as an example of something that takes more, <laughs> uh, let me walk you through how I created uh, sort of the intro for, I believe it was the final glitch of part 3, which is anime is real, walls are not. So it starts with, uh, you know, the, the Power Rangers music blasting in the background, and I gotta put all 13 items that I'm gonna use on screen, I gotta make sure they appear, gotta make sure they move to the correct spot, and gotta make sure they stay there until all 13 items are also in place. That part took me about, eh, 20 minutes. And then we have the little vignette intro for the glitch itself. So in this case, I have to actually, you know, create the text in Photoshop. That'll take maybe 10 minutes. Then I have to find these cute little anime girls, put them in the corner, make them shake. That's just a preset effect. And then the main part is this central video clip from Attack on Titan, I believe episode two, where the armored Titan destroys the wall. And it was kind of tricky getting this clip to actually work because there were some parts where his face would be really close up as he was charging, and it just looked terrible with the overlay of Red's head, so I had to like cut those parts out. But I still wanted to, you know, kind of make sense, so you can see in the final product, oh, okay, here's the part where somebody's running, it looks like it's Red, but he's huge. Okay, he's running at a wall. Okay, he's broken through the wall. And then like just half a second for the joke to kind of breathe and for people to sort of interpret what's happening. Obviously, if you're familiar with Attack on Titan, it makes a lot more sense than if you're not. But hopefully even like a random viewer can figure out, oh, it's red, he's charging at a wall, he breaks through the wall. And that I think is like a joke that'll land with most people. Usually when I sit down and edit these videos, I sit down and then edit the video. <laughs> without doing much else. So I'll usually start at maybe like 8 or 9 at night, and then I'll go until maybe 4 or 5 a.m., basically until the video is done. Uh, I sort of, re I really get into it. Uh, you get this sort of really nice feeling of accomplishment as what you've been working towards for the past, by this point, you know, 10-ish hours, really starts to come together. Uh, it feels really good. But there are definitely points where I'm editing, I'm like, man, you should really go and get some water. Like, oh, no, 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 but but if I go get water, then, like, the squirtle pickers win. I can't do that. This was how I worked back in my school days, so... It is sort of how I prefer to work. I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's much better to just go ahead and space this out over a couple days while maintaining a normal lifestyle, but, I mean... I'm not your boss, like, you do you. Eventually, after X hours of editing, X usually being yeah, between 7 and 10-ish, I will finally have a completed video. But I'm not done yet! Part 7. 
everything else. Of course, the video itself being technically done doesn't mean that I can relax, right? I have to go through the entire rigmarole of actually uploading the video to YouTube, which involves, you know, creating the title, the description, making sure, like, the relevant parties are credited in the description. I have to go ahead and do all the tags. I have to put in cards, so that's where... Like you might get see like a link to one of my other videos or like a relevant video that I want other people to watch. I gotta put it into the playlist. I gotta make sure that the ads are in places that aren't disruptive if I am running ads, which I probably am. <laughs> oh! Once the video is up, I, we get to the part that I think is actually just the pure fun part, which is seeing how you guys react to the stuff that I spent all this time putting together. Uh, I think as my channel has grown in size, it's become sort of impossible to respond to all of your comments, but I do read them. I get a little notification whenever I get a comment and I can at least go ahead and read through them. Uh, so please uh, don't think that your comment is going out into the ether. They do reach my eyes and the eyes of others who see the video. Even if you're making a comment that's something like, excuse me, this glitch actually exists in the Western release. Like I'm playing it up a bit. <laughs> like I'm sure that's not your intention. Um, you're just trying to help me out and I, I do appreciate that. Uh, even comments like, I guess you don't like Pokemon after all. Which I just don't understand. Like, yeah, I hate Pokemon. That's why I have an entire YouTube channel about it. <laughs> what? In the end, I would say, what keeps me making these videos is the reactions from you guys. Uh, it's sort of crazy to me to think that I have, like, over 4,000 people out there who decided to sacrifice 25% of their HP to set up that sub to watch me talk about... <laughs> A game series that, you know, I I don't particularly like the modern installments of. Uh, this was a huge part of my childhood and that still just like stuck with me and I've I've played the most recent games, but I would say at this point Pokemon is much more like a phenomenon for me than like a game series that I actually enjoy playing. E. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this this peek behind the curtain. Uh, Green Glitches Part 5. I, I have got the ideas floating around in my head. I've got about half of the footage recorded. You can expect it maybe next weekend? Uh, it's a special deal because this upcoming week is actually a national holiday in Japan, so I don't really have an excuse to not complete it <laughs> by next weekend. Uh, you can go ahead and flame me in the community tab if uh, it's not up by next week. Thank you so, so much for sticking around if you did this long in the video, that's just me sort of, you know, ranting at you. I hope to see you in the next video as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Farewell. Come on, do I look like somebody who's up to no good? It's fair enough. But you're still coming with me. Go! Monster Ball!